up there is like talking down to all of you. Preaching is not, preaching the word of God is not talking down to you. If you go to the office, your boss will talk down to you. Your supervisor will talk down to you. Your CEO will talk down to you. They will call you to the office and say, why are your figures like that? Where are the sales? You're not performing. How come you're late for work? The bosses all will talk down to you. This morning, I want to talk to you. Is that okay? Heart to heart. Is it all right? Because God is a God of mercy. And this morning is very special. I pray you will lend me your ears for the next 45 minutes. It will change your life. If you hear what is being said and what God has to say, and not only hear, but after that, do. Because the Bible says, if you say you have the word and you don't obey, and you don't obey the word, then God is, the truth is not in you. It's in the book, in the Bible, huh? First John chapter 2. You say you are a child of God, you say you are a Christian, and if the word says to do this and you don't do, then the truth is not in you. And if the truth is not in you, then you are not a child of God. So what you hear today, you must do. Obey. I'll give you an example. There are three things that we, we hear today, but God is asking us to obey. We hear sometimes something and we have to obey. Why we have to obey? Because if we don't obey, God will bring judgment to us. That's some, what some pastors preach, right? They preach judgment, which is true, but then this morning, if you hear that, not so nice, lah, right? You just celebrated Deepavali, brother, right? So you don't want to hear judgment. It's just like a slave. A slave will have to obey his master. The master says, walk, he has to walk. If the master says to clean the plates, he has to clean the plates, clean the house, sweep, vacuum. He has to obey because why? He's the slave. He has to obey. If he doesn't obey, he will be punished. Maybe instead of three meals a day, he will only get two meals a day. Then if you are an employee, you need to obey lah. Your boss tell you, you must obey. You need to obey. Even though you don't like your boss. Even though you don't like the face of your boss. You still need to obey. Because why? At the end of the month, you like the paycheck. Ma. You like the, the look of the check, you know, going into your account. Right? So you need to obey. No choice. You need to obey because why? You got bills to pay, children to feed, house rent to pay, Loans to pay, so you need to obey. But God is saying, I don't want you to obey like that. I don't want you to have to obey. I don't want you to need to obey. I want you to want to obey. You get what I mean? We, we hear the word of God and we want to obey because why? We love God. If the love of the Father is in you, then God is truly shining out of you. And it will drive you to just want to obey. When, when you come to church, you come because you need to, you have to, or you want to. Which is it? Many come because they need to. Because why? They know that they need Pastor Philip to lay hands on them so they'll be healed. They need to come. If they don't come, they don't get healing. Some they need, they need, they need to come to church. They have to come to church because they have to. No choice. Because they are the leader. Leadership by example, ma. Otherwise, next week, the names will be struck off the list. But do you ever think that you come to church because there's that driving force of love? You want to come to church because why? You want to. You want to worship God. You want to praise God. You want to give your all to God. That's the motive why we need to obey God. Because we want to. And this morning, 
You see, I haven't opened my Bible yet. Because God is speaking. It's, it's a new dimension I want to bring to this church this morning. Because time is very short. Time is very short. I'll be very honest with you. If you look at what is happening, not just here, you look all around the world, a lot of things are getting out of order. The only thing that still stands is the Word of God. Heaven and earth may pass away, but the Word of God shall stand forever. And at the end of the day, we have nothing else, but we have only the Word of God to stand on. And the promises of God. Because this world is getting out of order. Everything is going crazy. Have you seen the floods that's happening now in Middle East, in Dubai? In the desert, it has never been seen before. Rushing waters, flooding the entire city. In the desert, in Arabia. Rain, that has never happened like that in the desert. It's now happening now in the Middle East. What is going on? Something is out of order. So I want to say, share with you this morning the Word of God from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. It says, While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Ah, this is the important thing. Let us pray. Father, we come this morning in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray, God, that this morning, Holy Spirit, you minister to every heart and every believer here, Lord. That they that have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to them, O oh Lord. May you quicken their spirit, man, O oh Lord, to have the faith to arise, O oh Lord, to, to receive, O oh Lord, the, the words of truth and the words of life. God, I pray and avail myself as a channel of blessing by which your word may be declared forth and that it shall go forth and not return void, but it shall accomplish everything that pleases you, Lord. So, Lord, we bless this time, O Lord, in your name, Father, that, God, you will reign supreme and sovereign in this next hour, Lord, that the name of Jesus will be glorified and exalted. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. 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 Now, the Word of God is very clear in 2 Corinthians, Paul said this, huh? chapter 4. We all look at this, what we are looking at every day is natural. Wherever your eyes see, whatever your ears hear is natural. But let me say this, the Bible very clearly states there are two dimensions, two realms that we need to understand. One is the natural that you and I see every day, the skies the hills, the jungles, the trees, the houses, the cars, everything. These are the natural things. But God says there is another realm that your eyes do not see and this is called the supernatural realm or the spiritual realm. These are the areas that you do not see but that you need to believe because this is what we call the miracles. We have problem in this area. And that is the reason why we have so much of problems still happening in the church. Because we do not focus on the supernatural, we just focus on the natural. And some of these things, the natural has got no control. The natural realm is the dimension that is subject to the laws of time, space and matter. These three things. That is natural. It is subject to these three. Time, space and matter. Natural laws. And they can be accessed. These areas can be accessed from the five senses that God has given us. Number one, what our eyes see. What our ears hear. What our nose smell. What our tongue tastes. And what our hands feel. These are the five natural senses that we access the natural realm. But let me say this this morning that there is another realm called the supernatural or spiritual realm that these five senses cannot access. But this is real because the supernatural realm is the dimension that is above 
the natural laws. It is not subject to all the laws or your five senses. But it is real. The supernatural, it is permanent. It says it is permanent because the things which are not seen are permanent. The things which are seen are temporary. The supernatural realm is permanent and is invisible. You cannot see it. And the third, it is eternal. It is not governed by your time, by your calendar, by your watch, by your dates. It is not governed by your uh, time that you understand all the time zones in this world because it is eternal. This is the supernatural realm. I want to bring to you this morning this supernatural realm so that you will understand how to access this. So that this church will not be the same. We don't want to do church like this every Sunday for the next 52 Sundays in 2024. We want to do church for the next 52 weeks in 2024 in the supernatural realm. Thank you for those few hallelujah. I am very serious about this. And I can tell you, God is going to do that change. God is wanting to bring that supernatural into our natural world. Because this natural world is not able to solve most of our problems. What your eyes see, you can understand, but you cannot solve. What your ears hear, you are worried, but you cannot do anything about it. Only the supernatural that is permanent, that is invisible, and that is eternal is able to do that. The problem with the church today, by and large, in general, I've been preaching itinerant for 15 years now. I've gone to many churches. And I have yet to see the manifestation of God in all His power. Yes, there are occasions of a revival here, occasions of the anointing, healing, testimonies, yes. But it's not in the manner that what we read in the Bible, in the book of Acts. If you go back and read the book of Acts, all the 28 chapters, in every chapter, there is the signs and wonders following the preaching of the word. Every 28 chapters. Go back and read. You can turn any chapter in the book of Acts, you will find God manifesting Himself. So I asked myself, why is that so and why is it not happening here? God got favourites. Ah? No. God, has, God treats everybody equally. His power is always at its maximum. Every time at its maximum. It is always at 12 noon, right on top of us. Just like in the old days where they have a sundial. And when the sun hits 12 o'clock, it hits the dial, there is no variation nor shifting shadow. No more shadow because it's right above. And that power of God is always right above us. No shadow cast because it is maximum. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, has given us that power. And that power and authority that whatever He has received, He has given everything to us. So, the problem is with us. We are not appropriating that power and authority. Why is it? Why is it that we still have people so sick, churches with so much of problems, people who are possessed, people who are under the grips of uh, uh, deception, under the grips of oppression, under the, the, the grips of uh, all kinds of sicknesses and disease. Depression is another one coming. Why can this not be solved? Number one, I'll give you the reason. In my observation the last 15 years, many of us, we are still operating in the natural realm. We are operating in the area where our eyes see, our ears hear, and our minds start to have doubts. And we say, this type of case, huh? gone case. Gone, finish, harvest. No hope. But the church needs to rise up. Because we are so tuned to the five senses. And lately, we have an added problem, our handphones. 
Our handphones tell us so many things. News that are real, news that are false, news of deception, until you don't know whether to believe it is true or not. You need to download an app to filter all the news for you so that you can get the real news or the fake news. So all these things have now clouded our mind until so that we are ruled now by two words, reason and logic. Reason and logic. The church now is ruled by these two words, reason and logic. What is that reason? Reason is if you see someone who's sick, cancer for stage. Wow. Doctor say no hope, means no hope, law. What to talk? Went for ray treatment, went for chemotherapy, medical report show like this. Where go hope some more? When you come to church, you see it and you hear it. That's it. You reason and in your heart, you say, no hope, law. No hope. That is reason. Logic. Logic is like how I was trained in the computer line many years ago. In the, in the area of uh, 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 programming the computer, they, they have this uh, machine language. It's called machine language where it operates on binary. Binary is just zeros and ones. One and zero. Not like our decimals, one to ten. No, you just count on. But in binary, it's just zero and one, zero and one, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero. It's just like that. Logic. Logic says if it's zero and one, then this gate will open. If it's one and zero, this door will open. That's how the signals will be routed and the computer works. It must be like that. Cannot change. That is logic. The church now is ruled by logic. One plus one must be equal to two. Two plus one must be equal to Muna. Cannot be anything else. But with God in the permanent, in the supernatural, one plus one cannot be two. One plus one can be anything. One plus one can be anything. One plus zero is how much? One plus zero is? Logic tells you one plus zero is one. Because zero is nothing. Today I'm telling you this, a new thing I'm telling you. You are zero. We are all zeros. We are nothing. We can do nothing because we are ruled by reason. We are ruled by logic. We are zero because we cannot solve anything. But let me tell you today the good news. The good news is Jesus is number one. Jesus is number one in your life. And if you can believe what Jesus says, that number one plus your zero becomes number ten. You believe it? So you are seated here. Tell your neighbor now, hello, I'm number 10. Butter, butter. You understand, sister, why it's butter? 10. No, wouldn't it? Butter. Why, sister, why are you looking so strange? I'm talking Tamil. La. It's not a new tongue, it's Tamil. La. Ah, Tamil person, yeah. Huh. One plus zero is ten. Because Jesus by your side is ten, not one. Get rid of your reason and logic. Because now you are in the supernatural realm. Not in the natural. The problem with us, we are ruled by this reason and logic. And that is holding us back. We can't receive our healing. We cannot receive our breakthrough because why? We hear, we see, and we think in our heart already defeated, already we are be back to zero. We don't believe what Jesus says. That Jesus says, hey, sister, with you, God, with God in you, all things are possible. You believe, ah? Yeah, we clap, but we, we really believe or not? Then, no matter what the medical report says, no matter what the doctor says, Jesus in you is the hope of glory. Amen. Now I'm going to change your mindset. I'm not going to brainwash you. I'm going to change your mindset.
look at the temporary things, but you will look at the permanent things. The permanent that are invincible, the permanent that, that, that is above natural laws, the, the permanent that are eternal. And God is not restricted by the time that you and I know time. God, today, uh, 12 o'clock, something must happen. No? If nothing happens, uh, I'm gone. Finish. Bankrupt. The banks are going to come and foreclose my business. Or the landlord. Landlord is going to come with a new key and new set of lock. I'm going to be chased out of my home. 12 o'clock. God does not and will not submit to our time because He is eternal. To God, one day is like a thousand. And a thousand years is like one day to God. If you say, God, you have to come by 12 o'clock, and by 11.30, God is not there, then you start to change and reason and logic. Maybe I should call Pastor Adila. See whether he can lend me money or not. 11.30, ma. Because your reason and logic says you are desperate. You believe that God can do a miracle in less than one minute? I see head shaking, but I pray today you believe what is being said and you obey. Stand fast because I want to see this church growing in the supernatural for a change. For the next 52 weeks, we want to come to church because who are Powerful, man. Wallame. Power. Jesus. And you come. You can't wait to come. Because why? There's something that's happening. God is moving in the church. Yala is a small church. Never mind what. Big God. Big Jesus. Why do you worry church is small? It's not about the size of the church. It's about the size of your God in the church. As I said, I'm speaking from the heart today. That's why I'm down from the pulpit, from the stage now here. Same level. You know, I'll be very honest now. Can I be honest with you? I know why, because I know your pastor. If I be honest, I, I shall come back one. Every time I come, the last time I came in July, I know, I know when I came. July, I was here. Every time I come, uh, I see new faces, you know. Praise the Lord for new faces. Maybe because the last time I came, they were all watching from the house. And this time they say, oh, we better go to church now. Otherwise, the pastor will point there and invite all those who are watching online uh, to come because they're going to miss out. But... Every time I come, I see also a lot of old faces from here missing. I was just sitting down here, I was asking, how come like that one? Where are all the old faces? I want to make this declaration today. I don't know why, where are the old faces? Where have they gone to? What is in their heart? Maybe they have a reason not to be here. Maybe they have work. Maybe they have other important. But other than that, if you are not here today because you are not happy with the church, you're not happy with the way things are done, you're not happy with how the pastor uh, uh, runs the church, you're not happy with the people, you're not happy with this friend, you're, you're offended by this person, what they say and all that. If you're not happy with all that and you're left, let me say this. Everyone here, I can say this because why? Next week, I won't be here. <laughs> huh. There is an anointing in this church. First thing, there is an anointing in this church. This church has been here for more than 10 years already. If there's no anointing, uh, it would have closed down a long time ago. COVID, two years, also is still here. And it's growing. There's an anointing in this church. And God works that anointing to the pastor. It comes from the top. The anointing starts from the top. From the head, it flows down. If you go and read Psalms 133, 
Psalms 133, God says in His Word, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Unity. Must have unity. No unity, very hard. Number one. Number two, it is like the precious ointment flowing down from the head of Aaron, right down to his jungle, his beard, right down to his ropes, right down to the hem of his garment, right down to his legs. It goes from the top to the bottom. It flows down. So if the mandate that God has given to the pastor, he is to lead the church, therefore he's the head of, of this entire congregation here, the anointing will start to flow from the top. So if you stay united, if you are not offended, you are not easily offended, if you are not a, a picky, you are not a, a fussy about what this and that, and if you continue to press on, that anointing will slowly flow down. Say you are the years of the church, the anointing will touch you. Say you are the chin of the church, the anointing will touch you. Say you are the hands of the church, the anointing will reach you. It will flow all the way down to the least of the member of SLA. You get it? Don't allow reason and logic to affect your spiritual life because you are not dealing with reason and logic. You are dealing with an eternal God. And we are here only temporary. I say this very fearfully. We are all here temporary whether you like it or not. Because 2 Corinthians chapter 4 this is the last verse. Following that is the new chapter, chapter 5. It says, we all are like early bodies. We are living in a tent. Tent. You know what's a tent? You go for camping. You go into a jungle. You take the tent. You pitch the tent. It's a temporary structure, right? It, 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 will, it will shield you temporarily for two, three days. But it's not a permanent after you came, you, you dismantle it and then you move on. The next time you go to another place, you set up a tent. This is a temporary... You and I, we are living in a temporary world. It is temporary. I don't care how old you may be. You may be 90, you may be 100. Eventually, one day, you will enter into the permanent realm. And Jesus says, there are two places in the permanent realm. It starts with a H. One is called heaven and the other is called hell. All of us. Only three, weeks, uh, three days ago, I did a funeral. And I shared with the congregation. And many were not Christians in that congregation. The brother that passed on was a Christian. A very a loving, very uh, committed Christian. We've been trying to uh, uh, share with his family 13 brothers and sisters. Out of them, only three are Christians. The rest are all not Christians. And I shared, we are all living in a tent. One day, we have to remove that tent. And we have to go to either the H or the other H. Two H. But I'm here to tell you, let us deny the devil of victory. Amen. Let us bring everybody to heaven with us. Amen. Let us win souls for Jesus. It only, it only costs you 35 ringgit to win a soul. Ha, now you know where I'm getting it. Huh? Ha, only 35 ringgit to invest in a soul. Not expensive, right? How precious is that soul to you today? Go out. Reach out to your loved one. Invite them. 35 ringgit. If you have two, 70 ringgit. That's all. To invest in a soul that will go to a permanent place. This permanent place that Jesus promises in John chapter 14, He says what? No. I go to this place first. And I'm going to build you a mansion. For in my Father's house, there are many mansions. Mansion, you know. Maligai, you know, sister. Oh, you're Tamil, you must go back to Tamil school. <laughs> Maligai, temple, a palace, a mansion. And it's not a tent. It is a structure with 
RC beam, concrete, permanent structure, and it's eternal, it will be forever there. Thunderstorms, typhoon, rain, earthquake, all will not touch it because why? It is a permanent structure. No more shall you live in a tent. So that's why Jesus says, today, ah, I comfort you today. I tell you the truth, that you will all not live in this tent forever. It is only temporary. One day, you will go to your mansion. Amen. That is the hope you and I have. This is the blessed hope. Tell the 35 ringgit person that you're going to buy for that Christmas. This is the hope. Amen. You are investing in their lives so that they will also have a mansion. Now they cannot afford. Never mind. You say, this one I tell you, I guarantee you, freehold. <clears throat> Eternal. No need to pay loan. No interest. Why? Use this marketing strategy. They will come. It's, it's proven. It's guaranteed in the Bible. Tell them, I'm going to show you how to own this mansion. And it will be forever. Nobody can come and take it from you. The government cannot touch you. The banks cannot touch you. The alongs cannot touch you. It will be your permanent mansion. This is the supernatural. Church, I urge you today, you are listening this, to this for the first time. If God has brought you here, stay here. You want to see miracles? Stay here. You want to see the hand of God? Serve here. Because this is what God is going to do. Because if at all you start to move on, you know the hydrophonic plant you are planting. Eh? You transfer this vegetable to another pot next week, and then another pot next week, you think the vegetable will grow? Eh? So you jump eh, from this church to another, you will never grow. You are looking for a perfect church, but you are not perfect, you will never grow. You must be in the same pot so that the hydrophonic, the solution, the nutrients, everything every day will pour into the soil and you will receive the nutrient and then you will grow. I'm coming to you with a very simple illustration. Nothing complicated. No theology. All about vegetables and plants. All about houses, bricks and mortar and cement that you can understand so that you know today God is speaking to every strata of the congregation. Whether you have gone to school or not, you have not been to school, whether you have graduated graduate with PhD or not, it doesn't matter because the simple gospel story is for everybody. Amen. So get rid of your reason and logic when you come to church. And that is the reason why sometimes when we pray for you at the altar, we ask you to close your eyes. It's not that we want to, we want to do magic with you or put a charm on you. Or no. We want you to close your eyes so that you, you, you cut off all natural things and thoughts and sights so that your focus is on Jesus. Amen. And that's the only reason. But many times people, they don't know how to close their eyes one. You ask them to close their eyes, they still see like that, no? I don't know what they're looking at. I turn around, I see nothing. Or I think maybe they see angels or I'm not sure. But they don't close their eyes. And then you pray, uh, they'll be like rock solid like that, no? Nothing happens. You know why nothing happens? The next element to access this supernatural realm, the door into this supernatural element is a word called faith. That's the secret. A simple word called faith. You need to have faith to do this. How? Very simple. I'll just read you this story in the Bible. Taken from the book of Mark, chapter 5. Just listen. 
This is about the woman with the issue of blood. She had this issue of blood flowing out for seven years, non-stop. And because of that, she was not allowed to leave the house because during those days when you have blood flowing out, you are termed as unclean. You cannot go out. And she tried many, many methods. She'd seen many, many doctors. I believe she spent a lot of money trying to find a cure for her situation. But there was no cure for seven years. And then she heard, she heard that Jesus was coming to her village, was passing by. And she, earlier on, she heard a lot of stories about how Jesus did miracles, how Jesus healed the sick, delivered those who were demon-possessed, and even raised the dead. So just that hearing alone, she had that faith. She already built up that faith and that trust and that confidence because she had no choice. Jesus was probably her last option. It's a do or die thing. Why not give it a try? No, nothing lost. You already tried everything. Nothing, nothing already, nothing else. So, try Jesus. So when she heard Jesus was passing by, she said to herself, I must go and see him. So in verse 27 of chapter 5, it says, When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him, behind her, in the crowd, and touched his garment. She couldn't see him face to face because why? She's not allowed to come out into the crowd. She had to crawl through the legs. But she said, it's okay, I don't see him face to face. It's alright. I just have to touch him. The moment she touched the clothes of Jesus, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, now listen to this, Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? Jesus said, who touched my clothes? In the crowd, so many people rubbing here and there, everybody would have touched Jesus. So what's, so what's so abnormal about who touched? Everybody touched his clothes. But when Jesus asked that question, the disciples didn't understand. They thought, what was Jesus getting on? Jesus felt power flowing out of him. Not just the touching of his clothes. He felt power flowing out. And he looked around. Jesus looked around to see who had done this thing? Then the woman heard, and fearing and trembling, knowing that what had happened to her, she came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. This woman came forward, knelt down at the feet of Jesus and explained to Jesus her condition and how she received her healing by just touching the clothes of Jesus. Wow. And hear what Jesus responded. And Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. I want you to remember this. Whose faith is it? Your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. It's not my faith. It's not the pastor's faith. It's not the leader's faith. But it's your faith. Amen. Now you know how you want to get well. Now you know how you want to get the victory. Now you know how you want to get the breakthrough. It is by accessing the door of supernatural by your faith. Amen. Matthew chapter 17 verse 20 says, Faith as small as a mustard seed is good enough to even tell the mountains, be thou removed from here to there, and it shall be done. And nothing will be impossible with God. Do you catch that? That is the supernatural. We are dealing in the supernatural. It is not uh, subject to any law of time, space or matter. It is supernatural. It is beyond that. It is beyond nature. It changes. It can change. It can stop the weather. It can stop the storms. It can fill up the nets in the boat with fishes. It can do so many things. It can even raise up the dead. That is the supernatural region that you and I must go into. And the way to access is what? Faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. 
Everyone that comes to God, everyone that prays, everyone that seeks God must believe that God is. And He is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks Him. Hebrews 11 verse 6. That is what God is looking for. Your faith. Have you got the faith today to believe God for the supernatural breakthroughs in your life? Once you have and learn how to tap into this faith and access this permanent realm, the spiritual realm, then your life will be totally transformed. Wow. If I were you, I would jump out and clap. You have found the answer you know, to victory. Amen. It's not just in words. It is in supernatural acts of God. And the anointing that will begin to flow in this church will transform this church from one of the flesh to one of the spirit. It will be spirit-led. So reason and logic, just put it aside. When it comes to matters like this, miracles, you cannot use reason and logic. You have to tap into the spiritual realm by faith. The next thing we need to do, these are God-given. Huh? We have to replace the programs and events with being led by the Spirit. What has happened in the churches today is because nothing is happening, so we try and manufacture uh, and substitute so that the church can become relevant, so that the numbers can come in. So what we do, we spend hundreds of thousands in putting up fantastic sound system. And then the lighting system, wow, the moment you hit the drum, uh, the lights will go flicker like that. You hit one more time, uh, it will turn and dim. And then worship time, it will dim. And then praise and worship will become bright. We spend a lot for the aspect of the physical so that our eyes can see, wow, for those uh, who come, uh, wow, this one... Uh, Reminds me of the club I am going to. La. Wow, this is a good place to come uh, and pray. I uh, support this church. La. But power, elect. Healing, elect. Salvation, elect. Nothing. Just nice. But church, very big. Oh. A lot of people. Oh. But no supernatural healings. We have substituted being led by the Spirit with programs and events. I'll share with you here. I'm saying this because I'm seeing it working. The last six months, I've been asked to stay back in Glad Tidings, Chiti, home church, to help in the prayer encounter. For the last 12 years, I've been attending off and on the prayer encounter on Wednesday nights. Now it's Tuesday, but you, previously it was Wednesday night. We come, we pray. La. Right? We pray. First, we, we have worship, praise and worship. We start at 8.30 in the night, 8.30 p.m. We come, we have praise and worship, 15 minutes. So praise and worship, Lord. clap hands, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Then after that, the pastor on duty that day will come and share the word. So he'll come now and share the word. So, you hear another sermon on Wednesday. Sunday, you hear one sermon. Wednesday, you hear another sermon. So by the time next Sunday comes, you forget the Wednesday sermon already. And when you come on that Wednesday, you already forget on the Sunday sermon previously. So this will go on and on and on. So many sermons will be preached. We come inside here one, outside another. So it will go on and on like that. And then after that, uh, we have testimony. We have testimony. And then we have prayer points. Now, I'm saying all this is not wrong. Huh? It's, it's good. It's okay. But now we are talking about a supernatural God. Amen. Six months ago, the Holy Spirit spoke to the senior pastor. The chairs cannot arrange like that. If we arrange like that, huh? everybody looking forward. They're coming for a seminar. Or they're coming to hear somebody talk. That's it. It's like that. Ma. We come here and sit down to hear and to listen. 
But prayer encounter or prayer meeting, God told him to arrange the chairs in a circular fashion. Circular fashion. So they are not facing the stage. They are facing one another. And the microphone in the centre. And he stands in the centre. And the pastor in charge for that day stands in the centre. And they will lead the people into worship. And the people will not be looking expecting a message. Because why? They will be praising and worshipping God. So there was a slight change in the order of the sitting. At first, people felt very uncomfortable. Not used to it. Because after more than 20 years, every Wednesday doing things, suddenly you change the sitting. Ah. Oh, you see this sister's face. Ah. I don't like the look of her face. Ah. I have to face the face. I don't like the way that brother stand every time you shake here, shake there, shake here, shake there. Ah, yeah, I cannot concentrate. Ah. No choice. Face one another. A lot of adjustments. But now, after six months, we're getting used to it now. We're getting into that worship now. We close our eyes. Don't like to see in their mind. Close your eyes. Don't see. Lah. Just worship God. So, when you start to worship God, things begin to happen. Amen. When you start to pray and worship God, there's the difference between praying and worshipping God. Okay? Sunday we do, is fine. Sunday we have half an hour, we come, praise and worship, we clap hands. Okay? We, are, we haven't even entered into the Holy of Holies. We are just at the outside, outer courts. We come with praise, thanksgiving. Just before we want to enter into the worship, ah, base lah. Preacher have to come and preach already. You don't actually. But in a prayer meeting, ah, this is where I want to encourage you. Come for prayer meeting lah. Prayer meeting is to worship God. Wow, now all very silent right here. This pastor asked me to buy 35 ringgit ticket. Now ask me to come Wednesday for prayer meeting. Don't know next. He asked me to go and chunk all the ground and plant vegetables. So. Are you okay so far? I'm sharing with you uh, from my heart. Very honest. No theology today. Only the Word of God. And then, we change the order of service. We change the order. So the pastor asked me, David, can you help? Uh? I say, no need to help. Uh. GT, uh, we got 20 pastors there. No need, uh, so many pastors. I say, no, no, no. Not everyone can handle this change. Because we are still in that Reason and logic mode. We need to change that. I'm very, I was there at, that, at, that, at one point. It was reason and logic. But I've seen enough miracles in my lifetime to know that God doesn't operate through reason and logic. God operates through miracles. Amen. Beyond reason. You cannot reason. You cannot understand. You cannot believe. You cannot explain. And that's called miracles. That's where God operates. Amen. And I've seen enough of that. So I want to share this with you so that you also can be partakers. Not just us pastors only get to benefit. All of us get to benefit. Amen. Amen. Yourself. You can experience it yourself. So six months ago, I started once a month leading. And God said, don't prepare any message. Because... We have to prepare message message every time. Because there's no need to prepare a message. Just trust the Holy Spirit. Just go there and worship. And God will show and will give you what you need to say and what you need to do. Wow, oh, I say hallelujah. That's the best, you know. Can you imagine, Pastor? You don't have to prepare, you know. Take life easy. How good, huh? Holy Spirit take over. Spirit led. Spirit led. And we go on worshipping, worshipping, and then all of a sudden, everything stops. And we'll call out this person, we call out that person, and we speak to this, pray for this, and say this, and say that. And then you will continue to worship, and then it is a seamless worship. No breaks. Seamless worship for one hour. Wow. Would you like to see that in your prayer meeting? Huh? I tell you, it's possible. Amen. 
With God, everything is possible. It's only how we do it, whether you believe it or not. Of course, uh, starting very difficult uh, to worship. Because uh, for us, uh, after five minutes, close our eyes. Uh, we cannot tahan. Uh, somehow must open my, our eyes. Uh, right? Must look around. Uh, must see, uh, what is this little praying or not? The Lord doing this. What is that doing? Uh, what is the pastor doing? You know? We must see one. We all very KPC one. Uh, we all very Kepochi one. We must open our eyes. Uh, now, worse still. Now, uh, after three minutes, uh, our hand began to shiver. No? You know why our hand began to shiver? We go and look for our handphone. No, no. Right? We will somehow say, oh, I got a message. Ding, 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 ding. You're coming in already. Then we go and turn on the thing and then we will, we will see. Lah. But then we, we, we pretend lah, as if we are reading the Bible. Lah. But then you look long enough. Lah, sometimes lah, when they see, lah, they can smile. on. <laughs> Reading Bible like that, la. uh, yeah. this means go mental institution. La. Actually, not reading the Bible, la. reading somebody's. Uh... Correct? Uh? Uh, yeah, that one don't talk so much. Uh. They're very personal, okay? I don't want you all to be offended. Five minutes is very difficult. But if you push yourself, force yourself to worship and press in, press in into the spiritual, overcome the weaknesses of the flesh. Okay? The flesh is telling you, must see handphone. You say no, press in. The devil say, oh, yo, look at the floor on the right. Say no, 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 I'm not. I'm going to worship God. Just force yourself to worship. Oh, I say, very tired, no strength. Force yourself to do it. Because why? As you keep pressing on, then you will find the breakthrough when you enter into the gates, uh, into the Holy of Holies. That's the presence of God there. When you enter into the presence of God, then things begin to happen. Then the anointing will fall. Then you will feel the power. And then you will know that you have received a touch from God. And it did not come from the pastor laying hands on you. It came because you worship God yourself. In spirit and in truth. Try it. We have been doing it for six months now. It's slowly changing now. We are seeing things move. And now, even better, last Tuesday, I was on duty. Now I'm saying this not to bring a glory to myself. I'm saying this to share this testimony to encourage you. In the midst of the worship, God says to pray for healing. Now, our normal method is, at the end, we will call anyone, you're sick in body, you need a healing, come forward. And that also very difficult. Everybody waiting for everybody, right? You're looking, hey, nobody going back out, uh, better not. And then one brother come out, ah, then suddenly you also want to come out. Then when you see two, uh, then the three, after that the whole church will come out. Last Tuesday, no, no one came out. No altar call for healing. Wherever you are standing, while you are worshipping God, raise your hands. We pray for healing. You receive the healing by faith. Amen? And God will call out certain uh, uh, sicknesses and disease. When those diseases have been identified and called out, you say, yes, that's me. I want that healing in Jesus' name. Two days ago, I received a, a message from this brother. He said, Pastor, I forgot to tell you, uh, last Tuesday, uh, the prayer encounter, uh, while you're praying, uh, I have this cough for many weeks already. Cannot stop coughing. No? Keep continuously coughing. Talk a short while and then cough. He says, on the spot, he was healed immediately. Amen. There were healings that I don't know of because people have not come back, but I know they were healed in Jesus' name. Amen. And there were those following online. They couldn't come because of work. They couldn't rush back from work to come to church. So they followed online. There was a brother that shared with me on Friday. He says, while we were worshipping in church, he was in his house praying along and he felt the presence of God so strong in his room. The anointing was in his house as well. So I say, praise the Lord. Because why? God is not subject to time, space and matter. Amen. God will travel through our, 
understanding of time, space and matter and it will touch you because by the word of faith, it will reach you. Because why? If you have faith to believe, then the, you will draw the power of God unto yourself. Amen. So there is hope for those who are watching online. But please do come if you can come. Don't keep staying in the house. It's not healthy. You need to come into the fellowship of believers. Amen. There's a personal anointing and there's a corporate anointing. When you come to church, it's a corporate anointing. Together we worship God. Together the presence of God comes down. Hallelujah. So, this is what is happening now. After six months, the dynamics of the prayer meeting has changed. It has changed now. People are worshipping more. People are able to worship long. And the presence of God is so strong. And the anointing flows. And the pastors are catching it. They are catching the anointing. They are catching the vision. And they are now stepping out in faith. They are praying in faith. And then the people are receiving uh, their, their, their prayers being answered. All kinds of things is happening. And it's not going to stop that. It's only the start. Only the beginning. Something must break. Amen? We've got to break all those yoke and all those uh, unbelief. We've got to break all those traditions because the Spirit moves sovereignly in our church. Let the Holy Spirit rule and reign sovereignly. Of course, Sunday we cannot do that. Lah. We have our, but Sunday is Sunday. Sunday is preaching, is teaching. But prayer encounter is to encounter God. Amen? Not to encounter man. Prayer meeting is to meet with God. Not to meet with man. We come to meet with God. And that's changing. And guess what? After the Wednesday, or uh, the, now it's Tuesday. After that, when it comes to the next Sunday, uh, wow, the fire uh, carried through, through the Sunday. You know? Those that attend on that prayer meeting uh, will bring that fire on a Sunday and the worship will begin. And the anointing will flow, including the worship leaders and the musicians. Everything all move, and then the worship will start, and then the anointing will fall on Sunday. Amen. It takes a small group to bring about a change. And that small group, I say to you, can start this Wednesday at your prayer meeting. Hallelujah. Are you able to do that? You must support your pastor, lah. Because that's where the anointing starts. Remember I said, Psalms 133. The anointing starts from the top. And it flows down. So you want that anointing? You, you go and, today uh, you go and stand next to your rub shoulders. That's where the anointing starts. So church, I want to encourage you today. I've been here many years. And without fail, every time I'm here, I will call for, uh, we will call for those who need prayers to come. In July, I came. I did not call for those to come forward. I just prayed a general prayer and I prayed for those who need healing to put up their hands. And I will do likewise today. And now I've explained to you, it is not only my faith. I believe. God can heal. I believe the healing is there. But what about you? You are the one that needs the healing, right? You are the one that needs the breakthrough. So God is looking at your faith. At your faith. When Jesus met this woman, Jesus says, because of your faith, you are healed. Amen. And guess who was around him? There was a teacher, a rabbi, a leader by the name of Jairus. He came earlier and asked Jesus and invited Jesus to come to his house because his daughter was very sick. And they were walking towards his house when this woman interrupted Jesus' journey and stopped. And while they were having this conversation and she was healed after seven years, this Jairus saw this and he was hearing the testimony. He was lifted up in his faith. But just as he was so encouraged, <clears throat> one of his servants came from his house, came to whisper into his ears and said, Hey Jairus, 
No need to ask Jesus to come. Your daughter, Cherapuchi, die already. No need to come already. You now prepare for funeral service. So when Jairus heard this, wow, straight away, he lost heart. No more faith. Finish. Vanish. Daughter died. Jesus knew what was happening and Jesus turned around and told Jairus, only believe. What? Two words. Only believe. Even though whatever your natural eyes see and whatever your ears hear, Jesus says, only believe. Don't believe what your ears hear because with God, He is above your five senses. He is not directed at your natural realm. He's in the supernatural realm. So anything can change. But of course, Jairus didn't know. Lah. But Jesus said, only believe. You think Jairus believed? Ah? I don't think so. I don't think he believed. But Jesus had to show him. Because when Jesus says something, he will do it. Amen. And he will show you it can be done. And Jesus said, let's go to your house. But in Jairus' heart, what's the point? She already did. Ma. When Jesus arrived, true enough, all the mourners were crying in the room, whoa, whoa, wailing on. The mother, the relatives, everyone was crying. Jesus said, chase them out. Leave the room. He stayed back with his disciples and Jairus and he prayed for the daughter. And he only said this, little girl, I say to you, arise. Talita kum. In Aramaic. Little girl, I say, arise. And guess what? She arose. Just like that. Just like that. Jesus raised her up. So, what I'm trying to say is, what man says is not permanent. What God says is permanent. What man says is temporary. Amen. What you hear is temporary. What you see is temporary. What you are going through is temporary. Amen. What God says is permanent. He says, I am a God and I cannot lie. What I have said, I will do it. What I have spoken, I will make it good. He said it in the book of Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. Take it today. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Not a son of man that he should repent. He has said it and he will do it. He has spoken and he will bring it to pass. This is the God you and I. It is permanent. This word of God is permanent. It's the word of God that created this world. And if Jesus says, I'm coming soon, he is coming soon. Amen. David soon. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Don't worry. Amen. When he comes soon, you will get rid of your cane. You won't be walking like that. You will be walking normally. Amen. Everything will be made perfect. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you believe? I don't hear you. Do you believe? Do you believe Jesus is able to change your situation? Do you believe Jesus is able to lift you up to a different level? Do you believe Jesus can make miracles in your life? Do you believe that Jesus can bring back all those who have walked away from you? Do you believe that Jesus is able to change your financial position? Do you believe that Jesus is able to heal you? Do you believe that Jesus is able to deliver you? Then stand up, please. What your mouth confess, let it come from your heart. Amen. And what your heart believes, let it be so in accordance to your faith. Amen. It is not your mind now, it is your heart. Faith in your heart. And I want you to just close your eyes, raise your hands. I want you to believe with me. Because it is not my faith only, it is also your faith. Your faith is crucial. It will bring you the victory that you seek. It will bring you the answers that you have been praying for. It will bring you the breakthroughs that you have been praying for. It will bring you the solutions that you have been asking. It will bring you the prayers that you have been praying for. It is 
Your faith. Amen. Your faith will make you well. Your faith will make you whole. Your faith will deliver you. There is someone here, God is saying. In these last few days, you have pondered and considered and you are about to step out from this church. You are about to throw in the tower. You are about to resign. Give up. I don't know who you are. We have an English word called throwing in the towel. Throwing in the towel means you walk away. You throw in the towel means you give up. You cannot take it. You just throw in the towel and just walk out. I want you to know this. The Jesus that saved you, the Jesus that loved you, the Jesus that gave his life for you is speaking to your heart now. On the night before he was betrayed, before he was crucified, Jesus was having his last supper with his 12 disciples. After serving communion, Jesus took a towel with a basin of water and with that towel, he washed the feet of all his disciples. Now, Jesus could have thrown in the towel at that time, knowing very well that Judas was going to betray him, knowing very well that he will be captured by the, the soldiers and will be tortured and crucified for no sin that he had done, knowing very well that he will be denied, he will be forsaken by most of his disciples, he could have easily thrown in the towel and resigned. But what did Jesus do? Jesus took that towel and began washing the feet of his disciples. He didn't throw in the towel. So whoever you are today, I want, you to re I want to remind you, this Jesus that saved you, this Jesus that loved you, this Jesus that was so faithful to you, is telling you, the towel that is in your hands, will you throw in the towel or will you hold on to it? Because let me say this, the race that you run is not finished yet. But one day, you will finish that race. And at the end of the line will be Jesus welcoming you as a victor. So hold on to that towel. Continue to serve. Continue to serve God. Don't give up. Because today, the supernatural is going to come into your life. Amen. It's the faith that you have. Those of you who need healing, I want you to raise your hands now. Let us sing this song. Let us sing a song together and then we worship God. Can we? Lead us in the song, sister. Thank you. There's a power in the name of Jesus. As we worship Him, let's lift up our hands and let's proclaim the power of the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus.
Hallelujah. Pray in your own language. Pray in your own way. I want you to just close your eyes. Don't look at me. Don't look at the front. Look to Jesus. Cry out to God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, come. Hallelujah. Let every chains be broken today, O Lord. Let every chains, every bondage be broken today, Lord. Unbelief and doubt, I break and cast you out in Jesus' name. All flesh be cast out in Jesus' name. Let the supernatural, O Lord, come, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Release faith, O Lord. Release faith into everyone, O Lord. Faith as small as a mustard seed, O Lord. Believe you, O Lord, for the miraculous, Father, in Jesus' name. The breakthroughs, O Lord. Let the anointing break every yoke, O Lord. Every yoke, O Lord, today, in Jesus' name. In accordance to their faith, let it be done, O Lord. Let it be done, O Lord, that the Son of God will be glorified, O Lord. Will be glorified in this, O Lord. His Shakurobo Rianda, Hallelujah. Hataraba se de Riberiana. Hataraba Rianda, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I rebuke and I bind every kidney problem, every diabetes, every sugar, blood sugar condition. I rebuke and I cast out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Be healed in Jesus' name. Hataraba Rianda, Raba Riotorobo Rianda. Hataraba Rianda, Raba Rianda. I pray for those who have high blood cholesterol problem. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I release the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus that will run down from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Will remove every toxins from their body. Will remove every impurity from their body. By the blood of the Lamb of God, let it be healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I come against every disorder of the joints The knee joint, the shoulder joint, the elbow joint In Jesus' name, every back ache, every back pain In the name of Jesus, I speak order I speak order in Jesus' name I speak alignment of the bones I speak alignment of the joints I speak healing in the name of Jesus Be healed in Jesus' name that healing in the name of Jesus I come against every migraine every pain every headache in the name of Jesus let the anointing break the yoke and the depression and the oppression and the anxiety and the stress in Jesus name we cast it out from these bodies in Jesus name Lord we pray for restoration, mind, body, soul, and spirit in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I pray, Father, this morning. I pray, O oh Lord. I pray, Lord, for this brother, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord. I pray, Lord, for a breakthrough in his life, O oh Lord. I pray, O oh Lord, for a victory in his life, O oh Lord. I pray, O oh Lord, that you open the doors, O oh Lord, of finances, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, what may seem impossible with men is possible with you, O oh God. In Jesus' name, O oh Lord, I release, O oh Lord, abundance, O oh Lord, because you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, oh, that provides. In Jesus' name, Hatakarabarianda, hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, I speak, O oh Lord. I speak right now, Lord, the healing power of God. Healing, Father, in the name of Jesus. Healing of a heart, O oh Lord. Healing, O oh Lord, of a, all the things that you have gone through, Father. All the disappointments, O oh Lord. All the hurts, O oh Lord. Let the healing balm, Father, come upon her today. The healing balm, the love of God. Reach out to her, Father. Touch her, Father, in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray, Lord, for those who are not here today, Lord. 
God, I pray, Lord, that they will receive a glimpse and receive, oh Lord, the word of truth, oh Lord, that shall reach out to them. Why? Why online streaming, Father? Because you are a God not condoned to any natural causes, oh Lord. You are not subject, oh Lord, to time, space and matter, Lord. So now, Lord, we pray your anointing will reach out, oh Lord, to them in their homes, oh Lord. Wherever they may be, oh Lord, that the word of God that shall go forth, oh Lord, and not return void. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray, Father, for those who are standing here this morning. For whatever, Lord, their prayers is. For those, oh Lord, who are praying for their loved ones. For restoration of relationships, oh Lord. God, I pray. Sister Lilian, God says, don't give up praying. Don't give up praying for that couple. It may seem impossible for a reconciliation, but God has given you the ministry and the gift of reconciliation. What the enemy has meant for evil, God says, he will mean it for good. There can only be a turnaround when you go and carry the cross of Jesus. Because at the cross, there will be a U-turn. Though they are going down the road of destruction, when they see the cross of Jesus that you carry, they will be forced to make a U-turn. And then they will turn back and walk the straight and narrow once again. So don't give up. You are God's representative here to bring about that reconciliation. There is hope if you have faith to believe that God is able to turn the most difficult situations, most complex situations, is able to turn it around because of what Jesus did at the cross. He died for everyone. He died for all. He died for your sins, my sins, and all our sins. And by His blood, He has reconciled us back to God. In the name of Jesus, He will reconcile them back to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let's worship. Let's worship God. Let's pray. Don't, don't give up. Don't stop here. Continue. Hallelujah. I want you to receive today. I want you to receive today personally. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's an army rising up to break every chain. Yes, break to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Declare to break every chain. 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 Okay. 
Father, we just thank you, Lord, this morning. Lord, I've done my part, Lord. The word has been declared, Lord. It has gone forth, O oh Lord. And we know, Lord, from your promise of Isaiah 55, Lord, that it shall go forth and not return void, but it shall accomplish everything, everything that pleases you, O oh Lord. What pleases you, O oh Lord? Deliverance pleases you. What pleases you? Healing pleases you, O oh Lord. What pleases you? Providence pleases you, O oh Lord. Uh, multitudes, O oh Lord. Multiplication pleases you, O oh Lord. Good fruits pleases you, O oh Lord. What pleases you, O oh Lord? A uh, uh, break, breakthrough in the lives and transformation of lives and souls, O oh Lord. Salvation of lost souls, O oh Lord, pleases you. And God, your word shall bless the people that they have received and heard this word, O oh Lord. That faith has arose in their hearts, O oh Lord. And that they obey what you have said, O oh Lord. Not because they need to, not because they have to, but because they want to, O oh Lord. Because, Lord, you are their deliverer, O oh Lord. You are their present help in times of trouble, O oh Lord. You are their rock and their fortress, O oh Lord. You are their refuge, O oh Lord. You are the one, O oh Lord, that shall cover them, O oh Lord, with your feathers, O oh Lord. And you are the one that provide them, O oh Lord, under, the, under your wings, O oh Lord. They will seek refuge, O oh Lord. Your truth, O oh Lord, shall be their seal, their shield and their buckler, O oh Lord. They will not be afraid of the terror by night, O oh Lord. Nor of the arrow of the enemy or the darts that flies by day, O oh Lord. No of the pestilence that lurks in darkness, the viruses and the germs and the, the bacteria that we do not see, O oh Lord. No of the destruction that lays waste at noonday, O oh Lord. Because now, Lord, they are children of the Most High God. A thousand may fall at our side and ten thousand at their right hand, but nothing shall come near them, O oh Lord. Nothing, O oh Lord, because they come under your protection and covering, Father. So we thank you, Lord, for Psalms 91, O oh Lord. Your promise of protection, O oh Lord. Your promise of deliverance, O oh Lord. Your promise, O oh Lord, of healing. Your promise, O oh Lord, of peace, O oh Lord. So, Lord, I pray today the blessing over your people today. The ironic blessings of Numbers chapter 6, verse 24, Lord. Before we depart, that you will bless everyone and keep us, O oh Lord. That you will cause your face to shine upon us. And that you will be gracious to us, Lord. And that you will lift up your countenance upon us, O oh Lord. And that you will grant us your peace. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Praise God. Shall now hand back the time to a pastor. Brother and sister, let's give God a great clap offering for a wonderful message. The meeting is over because of already past 12 noon. But if you have anything urgent, you can still see our speaker and talk to him. May God bless us. Yeah, may the love of Jesus and grace of God be with us and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Come again for next week, same time, same place, for another encounter with God. Amen. God bless us. I have a blessed Sabbath.